Not yet. How are you? Hey, What's up, Zeno? Rocky Balboa. What's up? What's up, Rocky? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? Good. It's cold here in Wisconsin. It's cold here in Boston, but I'm still taking cold Wim Hof showers, and I heard that you're going to be joining that. <laughs> right. Yes. Hey, are we on split screen, gallery, whatever you want to call no, it? We're, we're both sharing the space. You hogging the screen again. No, I wouldn't do that without you knowing. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, um, Scott, someone may be first time viewing us. They may wonder why we have funny robes on and why we're looking so happy. Who are we? We are the Land Geek Guys, and this is Nightcap. This is Nightcap. We're here to talk about land investing. And, uh, yeah, N-I-T-E, Matt Forbes like to call, likes to call it K-N-I-G-H-T, but uh, we beg to differ. Differ. Yes, we do <laughs> beg to differ. And so, uh, uh, the reason for our show, if, if some of you don't know, is, is we just want to, you know, want to celebrate uh, this week's wins, talk about pain points, uh, strategize about business and life. Well, it started, remember way back, we were thinking about starting this uh, back about 10 years ago. And, uh, right. <laughs> right. And you were like, well, there's a lot of people that burn the midnight oil. They're out, they, they like to work late on the business and uh, there's no real content. So let's get out there and engage and, and inspire and uh, entertain. So we try to do it, not, maybe not in that order, but we try to get all of those things in. Well, entertaining is a is a is a major emphasis of our show, I think. Right. You know, well, I mean, we we got some big we got some big things coming up. We do, we do. I was to say, you know, should we announce it now or should we should we wait? I want to tell them what's entertaining to me right now. What's that? The bottle of Maker's Mark right behind you. Maker's just, Mark Podolsky, right there. Suddenly, just suddenly, just sitting there. The Maker's with my, Mark. With, with my Guinness tin uh, <laughs> and uh, my nightcap sign. Oh, right. The sign's on the floor. No, no, I no. See no. How, I, see how, I see what you think. Yes, I like to be able to go like this with it. And I haven't had to. <laughs> right. No, there are some big things coming up because you know what? I'm not sure, but uh, everybody knows, but next week, a little bit of a turkey day, Thanksgiving, and there's a couple of other holiday. holidays that have been created by the merchants, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business Tuesday. So we figured we'd interrupt that chaos with a little fun. Yeah, I hope you guys are all ready because we are having Nightcap Sunday brunch. Brunch, that's right. Sunday, uh, in between you know, Thanksgiving and uh, Cyber Monday, that Sunday... We're gonna have a brunch episode, and we're gonna be judging you on your uh, on, on on your on your uh, Bloody Marys. Like mine's yeah. probably gonna have a full blown cheeseburger on top, like overlapping the glass. <laughs> Eleven Eastern. Eleven. Bring your Bloody Marys. We need we need live proof of your Bloody Marys, just as if uh, your buyer needs live proof of a, of a notarized deed. We need a video or a, a photo of you with the Bloody Mary something, and whoever has the best Bloody Mary wins. What are they going to win? <clears throat> you got it's something? Up to you. I'm gonna, it's up to you. Well, we'll talk. I, I'm going to say a 30 minute coaching call. How's that? 30 minute strategy session? Strategy, even better. Strategy. Better. Be much better. <laughs> we, got, we got a couple of viewers, Mike. We got, uh, we're up to like, uh, 800 already 800 yeah i'm glad larry overstreet's here because guess what i rumor has it we're going to see him in texas 
Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. I, I can't wait to meet Larry in person. I've, I've Larry, are you gonna RV in? Is that it? You're just gonna cruise in with the RV? What's gonna happen? Well, he's living in the RV, so I, I would assume he'd cruise in. <laughs> um, Gary Fraser Lee's watching. He says, "Cheers." Justin Rogers is on, and uh, of course, Matthew Forbes, Mark Livingston's even here. Hey, Mark. Mark. The other Mark. Yeah. So we wanted to talk about something tonight, didn't we? I think I think we I think we did, yeah. Because you put a nice post in the uh, well, actually, you might have been talking about a webinar we had, but I think it relates to tonight as well. Uh, basically, what's holding you back, right? Here we are on this side of a is, is it a precipice? Is that how you call it? Uh, no, big... I was just thinking that word. Like you complete no. my thoughts. I did, and then where you want to be on the other side? <clears throat> um, it's really. It's the trust factor, right? And, and here's the thing: we used to. I've been doing martial arts my whole life, and we used to go out in this area in Lynn called the Lynn Woods. And one of the teachers I worked with, we we would go out and uh, and we would do this kind of outdoor running and climbing things. And this is one area we had to do this leap of faith, and it wasn't huge. It actually wasn't. Here's the interesting thing: it was probably something that if it was on the ground in front of you, you'd be like, "You want me to leap? Like that's nothing. I can do it all day long." But add like 20 feet of a drop, right? And you're like, okay, well, if I don't do it, there's a consequence, right? So it makes it a lot more uh, just kind of ominous, right? But it's really not that hard. But the fear, the fear of falling down into that precipice, is that right? Is that how you say abyss. it? Abyss. Makes that jump, which you could probably almost walk over if you tried, right? Makes it ultra scary. I think that relates to our business. How so? How so? I'm glad you asked. Not like I prompted you. <laughs> because the way that our business works it is not something that is super difficult. There's a few things that have to happen every day, right? There's a few. This is five step process. When you know, it's funny when I talk to you on the phone about it, I'm actually walking one, two, because it's like Scott Todd talks about the five plates. You know, the idea of identifying an area where you're going to mail, go where, the, go where the land investors are, go where the wild things are, as I say, right? Go where the land investors are. Next thing is people start writing back to you, due diligence, right? Evaluate. Is this a good investment of money? We make our money on the buy side. Is it a good investment of your money? Then how do you quickly close? How do you market? And how do you sell that property? It's not ultra complicated, but it does take a leap of faith to believe that the system works, right? Is this real? Ask your average friend about land investing. What will they tell you, Scott? Hey, I want to go invest in raw land in Arizona. What do you think, Scott? Dude, what? Exactly. Why, why would people you do that? Like, it's such a micro niche that people just be like, you're crazy. So you could listen to that and you could feed into that and you could be scared by that. Or you could realize that there's a group of us that do this type of investing every day of the year all year long and we do it very well. And so you have to first and foremost get over the fear that this is not, is this some late night infomercial, right? Is this what we're talking about here? No, it's a tried and true business model that works. First, you have to understand that. Then does it work for you, right, Scott? I mean, is this something that you uh, that you could see yourself doing? And what do we always say? Does it sing to you? That's a good way to put it, right? Ooh, I like that. Yes, does it sing to you? What, what, what we know about this because of our, uh, we're gonna, uh, we look at the, uh, our our singing talent? Yeah, we've we've done some singing in the past on this show. So does the business sing to you? If it does, the last question you have is, how do I do it? How do I get involved? Show me the money. Show me how to do it, right? That love story. Show me the money. How do I get involved? And uh, this is the idea. This is a five-foot jump over a, over a five-foot space. It's easy. You can almost walk over it. But the abyss... The the all the all the people telling you that's not real, all your self doubt, all that that makes that leap ultra hot. So it's really kind of similar, I think. The I would call it a chasm. Chasm. The chasm. Is that similar? No, no, no. The chasm. C H A S M. Okay. Appears to be a lot larger than it is, right? Right. And. And uh, all of these things uh, in our lives make this chasm seem bigger like, than it is. It makes us, they, they make us feel like we are not capable of traversing the chasm. 
Yeah. But, but, but we are, you just got to take that leap and go over. It's like, there are all these things you have, you have skepticism, like you mentioned, right? I was skeptical when I first heard about this. I was like, wait, that sounds way too good to be true, but it makes amazing sense, but it sounds way too good to be true. Who is this Mark Podolsky guy that I'm listening to on the podcast who sounds so cheery and happy and like he's making millions land investing. That doesn't sound right. Why are more people doing it? Right. And then, uh, you know, you got uh, fear makes that chasm seem bigger. You're fearful to step out of your normal daily routines and do something different. I grew up in a family of farmers, healthcare practitioners, construction workers, hard working people. They go to work every single day. Uh, 90% of them go to college for four years or more, pharmacy school, nursing school, med school, physical therapy school, lawyers. My grandpa was a judge. My uncle is a, is a lawyer. I mean, these, this, I'm coming from a family where education is the norm, right? right? And going to work every morning at seven in the morning and staying late at night is the norm. And trading your time for dollars is the norm. So for me, that was the only norm I knew. It was, a, it was fearful to step out over that chasm because I knew no different. And then I tell my family about it and they're like, huh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> and I think they're still like that. <laughs> yeah. It, it's so. interesting that you say that because the, uh, one, the same teacher I had in the martial arts, Ken, used to talk about FUDs, fears, uncertainties, and doubts. And those will trip you up in life, of course, but in this business particularly so, right? Um, if you let them kind of direct you, but you have to overcome them. You have to realize that there's a certain way this business works and you have to stay the course with it, right? You have to follow the ingredients as Scott Todd talks about in flight school, right? There's a, there's these ingredients. That's why he holds up the uh, in flight school, the uh, is a cake batter or something, a brownie batter. And it's box, a box of cake mix. Right, because there's a, this is, this is an ing the ingredients, a recipe, it works. So how do you overcome these fears, these uncertainties and these doubts? You follow the recipe, you stay the course. There's a way to go from where you are now to where you wanna be and you follow that course and you commit to it, right? You have to, can't be wishy-washy. As one of my favorite people said, Mr. Miyagi, right? Uh, you walk the left side of the road or the right side of the road, watch the middle, walk the middle, you get squished like a grape. <laughs> Oh, nice. Wishy-washy. You got to pick a side and you got to go with it. That karate kid, come on. You never remember that quote? I, oh, I, I, I don't remember the quote per se. I love the movie. Okay. But uh, you were like 20 when that movie came out. And I was like 10. So you're... You probably no, I was were, younger. I was actually younger. I was about I know, I was, 15. I was being a jerk. I stood on top of that rowboat in my lake in Maine doing my karate blocks after watching Ralph... Uh, Ralph Machio. Machio. Yeah, I, was I kind love of that movie. Right okay, oh, let's talk that. Karate Kid for a minute. Like, okay. how much fear did he have, right? But right. He, here's another thing. Here's another thing that helps you move forward. Uh, you have in this in this particular particular uh, Facebook group, uh, you have example upon example upon example of people that have done this successfully so all you need to do is follow in the footsteps of those who have done this successfully right uh there's something to be said for uh being you know having access to people who are mr miyagi in this case with land like right. mark podolsky scott todd they are mr miyagi with land they are you know and especially with the programs, you know, uh, with with flight school and, you know, uh, the investor toolkit, you don't have a dojo, right? Flight school, you have a dojo. You have Scott Todd. He's showing, he's telling you when to wax on and wax off. He's like telling you exactly what you need to do. He is your guide. He is your Sherpa. And that you, that you have to take solace in that. 
in uh, in moving forward. Very true. Very true. I love the Karate Kid references. I especially love the new series Cobra Kai. A little shout out to Johnny, the new good yeah, guy. Yeah, no, no spoilers. La 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 la, because I want to watch that. Dude, it's been out for like a year. Dude, dude, buddy. I I I got a whole list of shows. I'm 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 ticking them off one at a time. Right now, I'm uh, you know. Do you think we one, should have a segment? You think we should have a segment? I'm just asking. Yeah, I got a segment for you. Uh, let's see here. I don't really have any segments ready except for this one. So I'll work mm -hmm. on the other one. But uh, our always favorite, let's do the Boston Lega segment of the week. <laughs> I knew it. You knew it? I, I knew it. Yeah, I know. I just, uh, I'm getting too many handouts here. I need a. Uh, I need to up my technology. Okay. Anyway, this is the segment where uh, basically I make fun of Mark uh, Mike's accent, and uh, I spell a word, and Mike repeats after me. Mike 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 says the word that I spell, I and say uh, we. You say it correctly. Yes. Uh, we we uh, we hear how Mike Zeno pronounces the word. And then uh, all of the lame geek. Uh, I better have a glass of water first. <laughs> water? I'm ready. All right. You ready? I'm ready. D I F F E R. <laughs> it's funny you should ask because I was at the fire station the other day. One of the guys came in and said something, and I told him I beg to differ. Differ. Yeah. <laughs> You always, you know, I beg to differ with that. I said, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. How would you that's say almost, it's done? That's almost like this one. The cheetah never play cards with a cheetah. Yes, my favorite. <laughs> never play cards with a cheetah. <laughs> oh man. Well, hey, uh, what else do you have to say about uh, what's holding you back? Well, again. I think that that is the biggest Oops. thing I could say is that this perception of difficulty. How about this? The perception of I need proof of concept. So oh, that's this is like, let's let's definitely talk. I love this yeah, one. Because this talk. is like putting the cart before the horse, honestly, right? It's like and, what, what came be first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, the proof of concept or the first deal? Um, truly, I understand it. I do because again. The way people come to this model is first and foremost, is this real? Okay, I hear about this land investing. Is it real? And then you do some investigation. You find out, wow, there's a community of people that actually do this. So it's real. Does it speak to you? You're like, okay, well, the fact that I can earn in two to four hours what most people do in 20 to 40, well, that speaks to me. The fact that I can automate and delegate uh, and eliminate and make this really efficient, that speaks to me. Okay, so you know it's real, it speaks to you. How do you get involved? Well, let's see, they have this toolkit, self-paced study guide, they have this flight school. These are two ways to get involved. Either one of those can take you to where you wanna go, that proof of concept. Some people are quicker to action than others. That's just life, right? Some people are better at execution than others. That's just the reality, but let's face it. A lot of people though are caught up, <coughs> excuse me, in this paralysis by over-analysis, meaning we look at something, so hard, so deep that we don't take action. It's like when I was a kid, my father would say, geez, you walk in circle uh, all in over before you decide to finally do something. You think about it all day long, then you do it, right? That's paralysis by overanalysis. That's a great way to put it. And the way to remove that, I found, is I surround myself with action takers. I partner up with action takers because I know that if I'm around people who take action, I'm going to gravitate towards action. If I'm left to my own self, I will probably do this paralysis by overanalysis. So I surround myself uh, in a community of people that are action takers. So the toolkit has everything in there for success, right? It's just you have to take that and kind of convert it into action. And you can do that. You could, you know, maybe 12, 18 months, you'll have a business running solid. But do you want to condense that down to four months? Do you want to condense that down to getting properties you know, right away? Then you go to flight school. So really what I'm looking at as an obstacle to success is the inability to commit 
to what has to happen, and that is action. And if you can't do it on your own, then you better get someone who's going to push you there. And I can't think of anybody that pushed someone harder and faster than Scott Todd. Oh, well said, my friend. Can I have that? A... That was that was awesome. Cheers. 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 You know, I think um, you, you've heard that quote: uh, "You are the average of the five people you hang out with most." Right. Yeah, I've heard like, it. Uh, you've heard it, right? So yeah. that applies to so many things. Like that applies to personal life. That applies to work life. That applies to, and honestly, applies to this. Like, if if you're working the toolkit on your own and you don't have anybody to, you know bounce ideas off of, um, it can be hard to move forward. And, and you may have difficulty with success, but if you hang out with people in flight school, hang out with Scott Todd, hang out with Mike and myself, you know, it seems to just move forward uh, a little bit more quickly. So that, that's what I love about this community too, is as, as you always say, the people in this community raise the glass ceiling and, and you are able to achieve that same standing as other people around you, right? What's my favorite quote, Scott? Say it, please. You know it. Uh, something about uh, riding around on a horse on his- Oh, come on, you got this. This is the best quote ever. And this is- It a, is the best quote ever. Martial arts is something I've done my whole life. And one of uh, my favorite mentors, uh, uh, he's, uh, anyway, uh, his teacher told him, even a fly can travel a thousand miles on a horse's tail. I was just going to say it. I was just giving you a hard time a minute ago. I know. Grab on to someone who's successful and hang on for the ride. And, you know, the best success I've had in my life is when I don't overthink it. I just basically, because this is thing that your brain will do, right? It'll start twisting and turning and thinking and all these different things, right? Or you can just go do the action. Just go do the action. Don't be like me, as my father used to say, walk in circles all day long and then finally do it. Think about it all day long and then finally do it. Just pull yourself to the action phase. Surround yourself. Hang around. If you're hanging around with someone who's like a doubting Thomas or somebody who's like, well, I don't know. You should be more conservative. Hang around with somebody else. Hang around with someone who's going to force your hand and push you to action. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think awesome. Um, Wicked awesome. Say it. I I th I th it's wicked awesome. I think I think another thing that uh, is is a barrier to jumping across that chasm, yeah, is is your is your pride, and that kind of goes hand in hand with this as well. Like, um, there are some people, and I was maybe like this when I first started out, where I like. I didn't want to have to rely on anybody else to figure this out. Like I wanted to just like, I wanted to be able to say that I did it. Like pride. And, Is that pride? Yeah. Yeah. It's like pride. Like you, like, uh, yeah, it's pride. Yeah. Isn't it? I think so. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I'm just no, asking. Wrong. I'm looking there's for nothing. clarification. It's like, uh, there's nothing wrong with pride, but I think I think a lot of people feel like they need to prove it to themselves first before they seek guidance. And I think seeking guidance first, knowing what I know now, uh, leads to success more quickly. So that I think is a barrier to moving forward sometimes for people that I think sometimes holds some people back. Right. Yeah, everybody's different. We can't pigeonhole a whole group of people, right? Everybody's going to have something that limits them. The difficult part is have that self-introspection, right? To look inside yourself and say, okay, what's holding me back? That's the hard right. part, right? Yeah. Uh, that's why I believe in the, uh, hey, got to love, got to love Ray Dalio. Always shouting out. I have this guy's book, uh, Principles on just, I'm on like chapter 750 right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on chapter uh, 30. Yeah, he's got a lot of chapters, for sure. <laughs> he but, really does, yeah. You know, uh, it's just he talks about meditation, and the reason is, you know, I think it's much more accepted in society today, right? But the idea is this. You calm your mind down, 
just like who hasn't had the experience of, hey, Scott, remember that person we went to school with? And you're like, and you can't think of it. But then when you go on to another subject or another, it pops in your head, right? Immediately. So the idea is meditation calms down your brain. But the reality is that's where the creative juices are. When you're calm and you're focused, then this creativity can pop out. So that's that's the antidote to stress. People think if you try harder, what a poor thing, right? For kids are in school, right? It's got try harder, try harder, try harder. How do you try harder? It's like that alone must make people trip out, right? Try harder. Well, like that's a solution. The reality is calm down, calm down and let this happen, right? So with the business, calm down and trust your Sherpa. Trust the guy who's going to guide you. And in this instance, we're talking about Scott Todd. Awesome. Very good. I think it's up, uh, uh, Phila, uh, our, uh, a filler? A filler. Can I call him the a filler? Re, a, a refiller. Let's a bring refiller. up a refiller. We're bringing the refiller up. <laughs> well, that's... He's, got, he's got a nickname. We just nicknamed him. He's the refiller. Welcome the refiller. There he is. Hey, is that is okay that, to call you the refiller? Is that like landfill from Beer Fest? I feel like that's my new name. <laughs> Good Lord. Is it okay to call you the refiller? Sure. Yeah, that's I've been called. Back to the refill segment. A hell of a lot worse. Yeah. How are we doing? How's it going, Matt Forbes? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Living Thanks the for living, us. living the dream. Yeah. No, I'm uh I'm I'm happy to be here. So uh got a cocktail? I I I re poured myself too early. I already I already re poured mine too, but I can yeah. I can go through the motions. Yeah, so for the 786 people out there, get a cocktail. Uh, you nice. deserve it. Go ahead and drink. Cheers. Gross. You, said, well, well, you had to pour it, you said. Uh, right out of the bottle. It? Right out of the bottle, Zano. Just right back. <laughs> Were you drinking a white wine spritzer over there? What, what are you well, doing? I wouldn't appreciate that. I better pour it in the cup. No, I got this. You know what? I'm going to have a shout out to the Willet. The Willet. Look at that Thanks. pose. Anybody want to snap a screenshot? Go. Is that a bourbon? Three, two, one, go. It's <laughs> a small batch Willet. I don't know. Uh, you tell tell me, uh, Matt. Is that a bourbon? I don't even. Know. Oh, it's a whiskey, rye. Yeah, I, I don't. I did not know that answer, but yeah, that sounds I, right. I haven't had a. I haven't had the Willet before. San Antonio. Could be what? Yes, yeah, San Antonio. Exactly. Matt Forbes, you going to be there? I am. I uh, I'm booked and everything. Yeah, Matt, we're gonna have you in a future episode. We've already have the Scott. Can we? Can we? I mean, it's a great episode we're gonna have. Can we say it? I just really want to say it. We talked about it today. Well, little, well yeah. I mean, we've had. Uh, well, no. Here's the thing. Like, we have a lot of we have a lot of exciting things coming up on Nightcap. We we already talked about uh, brunch you know, night, Nightcap Sunday. You know, but what about this? Uh, but can we and, say? It? No, wait, wait. No, there's no. more. Okay, okay. We got uh, we got Nightcap the Musical two coming up. Oh, I've and, dreamed and a dream. And, and, and rumor, Forbes, wait, wait, wait. You're yes. saying as well. Rumor has it Matt Forbes sings in the sequel. Oh yes, wow! Yes, yes. Wow, that sounds and, uh, like a movie nobody wants to watch. All right. And another feature coming say soon. It, say it. <sighs> Do you want to say it together? Because Matt, you're going to be on this with a competitor. Yeah, we're gonna pick a competitor. We're gonna pick a competitor. We're gonna hand pick a competitor. Okay, a competitor. I like it. We're gonna have Nightcap Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Ooh, I like it. Will that be fun? Yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, I'll I'll take cool guys from New England for two (laughs) hundred. Uh, wait, so wouldn't wouldn't I be uh, like the host, or somebody else is the host, and you two are the contestants? Wouldn't Mm -hmm. that be how this? No, that wouldn't be fun at all. Um. Okay. Because we're going for a thousand, Trebek. Let's do it. We're coming up with the answers, Trebek. We're coming up with the answers, so you got to come up with the questions. So we're going to find you a worthy competitor, Matt. Uh, I don't think that in, in the land business, I don't think that's too hard. I'll be honest with you. It could <laughs> just be like uh, that person right out of the yellow pages. Probably <laughs> knows this more than I do. <laughs> Matt, I got two things to say to you, man. Number you one. Like- you like my hat? No, number one, thank no three things. Number one, thank you for the refill. Sure. Number two, 
um, we'll see you on the outro. Mm. Number three, check your email. Okay. That's ominous nice. and scary. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you after. All right. Go check my email. <laughs> and if you don't see us in your inbox, check your spam. <laughs> uh, truly where you belong. Good, sir. We'll see you in the outro. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, I the power to I want the power. I want to eject him. I know. I have the power to click a button and it's over. Wait a minute. Did we bring... We did bring Scott Todd back on after that horrible incident where we had to have a translator, right? We, we brought him yeah, back yeah. on? Yeah, we yeah, did. He came back he on. Does that, was a, that was actually a great episode. Oh, that's when he dropped the mic. He did drop the mic. If you all, if anybody out there, we were all, all these are on YouTube, by the way. We have a huge following um, on YouTube. And there's an episode where we have Scott Todd, we interviewed him. And <laughs> honestly, if you want inspiration, you got to go there. Yeah, I don't, I think it was in August. Um, I think it might have been the week before Who came? The, uh, the musical. It was, it was like incredible. Honestly, um, joking aside, go back and watch that episode if you need inspiration. Yeah, the, the musical was August 30th. If you want to watch that one too. Aileen D. Augustine, I see you're watching. I know that you have Nightcap the Musical on repeat. <laughs> Mike, hey, there are, I'm, I'm, hey, Mike, there are a couple other things that hold people back that I want to talk about. Tell me. Is that cool? Uh, the floor is yours. The first thing is time. Right? Right. How, how many people are hesitant to get into this because of lack of time? So, yeah. what, is your, what is your advice to them? It's a true statement, Scott, that a lot of people basically, their lives are so busy that they can't seem to find room for something new. Right. But, but with something, I would say to them, don't go with the toolkit. If you time is an issue for you, do not go with the toolkit because a toolkit could get you lost in the weeds in terms of execution because all the information is there. Believe me, all the content you need is there. But flight school, 90 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes a week with Scott Todd, followed by a couple hours a week of execution, and you can move the business forward. You can find two hours a week. I guarantee there's two hours in that week that you could get up early, go to bed a little later, stop watching maybe uh, something on TV. I don't know. There's a way to put those two hours in there. So you have the time. I would say it's more about the commitment, and the commitment will bring the time. In my mind, honestly. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I think I think a lot of people are very hesitant to get into this because they think they don't have time. But but when you map it out, and uh, when you use that iPhone uh, app that on Sundays tells you how many hours you've spent on your phone in the last week, and uh, you see that it's just a crazy amount, and you're like, oh man, what could I have done with those hours of time? Right. Uh, there are hours of time right there that you could uh, you could be spending elsewhere, whether it's with your family or or doing something good for your mind or body or soul or whatever. But there is time for land investing, and you know what? If you're motivated to change your life, you will oh, make you just the time. Took the words out of my mouth, literally. You complete me because I was thinking of this. If you were to find someone, and we go back to this analogy over and over again, but I want to say it again because there's nothing more real than this. You're at a cocktail party. Your friend throws a Christmas Eve party, let's say, right? Because we'll get, we're in the season. We're close. And, or Thanksgiving. You're at a family get-together. And you're like, hey, I brought my buddy over here. And you're like, start talking to this guy. And he's like, yeah, well, what do you do? Well, I, I do land investing. Really? And starts talking about the passive income, the success he's having basically inside you going, oh my God, this is insane. If this guy offered to teach you how he did what he did, would you not want to learn that? Pick anything, really. We're talking about land investing because that's our niche, but pick anything. If you found someone with such a um, high level of, a, of ability and accomplishment and proven track record in, this, in any business, you would be like, 
can I shadow under you? Like, can I learn from you? That's what flight school is. You're taking the, uh, the knowledge, the expertise, the execution of Scott Todd, and you are having him show you how to execute. So re really, if you, again, I'll go back to what I said in the beginning. First and foremost, do you think this is a real model? Are we here spitting some late night infomercial that's just a bunch of hype? I can tell you that it's not. I can tell you right now, as a firefighter for the past 20 plus years and now land investing for four plus years, this is no joke. This is real. So the business is real. Number two, does it sing to you? Sing to you means can you see yourself doing it? Well, I can see myself doing it. And you know why? Because I don't do it. I have built a team of people that are highly efficient so that I can do in two to four hours what it would take me 20 to 40 hours. So I believe in that. And then it becomes down to how do I get involved? Well, that just means how do I learn the model right now? And you learn from someone who already knows how to do it. You, I think that, you know, I was talking to my son about this. He's a plumber and uh, a shout out to him. He just got his journeyman license. He's a That's plumber. Awesome. Here. Yeah. Very Congrats, dude. Extremely proud of him. Um, and we were talking about how years and years ago, that's how people learn professions, right? They would basically, hey, my dad's a blacksmith. I want to be a blacksmith, right? I want to be a barber. I want to be a plumber. I want to be an electrician. You'd shadow under someone who's an expert, and they would teach you the trade, right? So this is a trade. This is this land investing is something that can be taught, can be conveyed, and we have someone that will show you. So uh, I think that it's, it's just that. It's real. And I love Justin Rogers put here, fear of failure, which is why flight school is the best. Yeah, fear of, fear of failure, right? I mean, nobody wants to be proven uh, proven wrong, right? Like your friends are telling you, oh, that's crazy, right? Um, so that fear is real. Just like jumping over that chasm. Is that what you said? Chasm. The chasm. I mean, come on. It's like, there it is. It's five feet. You could basically walk over it. But... The consequence is if you don't do it right, you fall into the abyss, right? But you have someone right there showing you, hey, look, this is how you do it. Jump, they jump, and you follow. Uh, it's just faith, really, a leap of faith. That's awesome. A I leap love of faith. Facebook, Scott. What was that picture? Where you want to be, where you are, where you want to be? Here, I'll, I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up. Yeah. Can, you share, can you screen share that? Uh, while Yeah, while I'm bringing that up, uh, leap of faith, you know, uh, did you know that uh, Steve Harvey, at the end of every Family Feud episode, he, he walks out on stage and and talks to his audience about a leap of faith? No. Is that – now, if you watch the – is this, like, unrecorded? It's unrecorded. But at the end of every episode, he, he goes out and uh, – and he talks to his uh, audience about a leap of faith. I think I've talked about this on here before, but, and I don't, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, Steve Harvey's a Christian and he took, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit based uh, in Christianity, but, but what he has to say about taking a leap of faith is really powerful. And I would encourage you to watch it sometime. It's on YouTube uh, everywhere. Um, but uh, it's, it spoke to me and uh, I think it speaks to a lot of people. Uh, it up right you know, now. It's yeah. It's uh, like you know. It's 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 all about uh, you know. You're you're on the edge of a cliff and and you know you need to take a leap and it's like uh, oh it's just exactly like this picture. Let me let me show you. Hold on one second. Can you see this, Michael? There it is. I love that. That is, you know what. No wonder I'm talking about what I used to do in that workout in Lynn, the Lynn Woods, it was called, because it was just like this, except the distance probably wasn't as great. Literally, you could probably almost step over it. But if you look at the depth and realize if your step is off by a centimeter, it's a pretty big consequence, right? It's still right. scary. So even if you could just... Uh, you know, it's just like if you were to walk a line, right? But then that line was 2,000 feet in the air, right? It's just a line. But now right. there's a big result if you don't uh, walk the line straight. So this is a very good, um, this is a very good picture because it illustrates, I think, something that's very real: the fears, the uncertainties, and the doubts that people would encounter. Yes, for sure. And th this is. This this picture conveys exactly what I was talking about with the Steve Harvey video. Uh, 
I'll post them both in the in the feed here, uh, the picture and the and the video. But it, it's it basically he's talking about like where we are, and if you're not happy where you are, you need to take the leap to be where you want to be, and uh, it's scary, dude. Like it's just you know jumping into the unknown is yeah. scary, but. Bye. There are things there that will catch you. Right. People who have already gone the path, right? People who have already right. gone for you can help you. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. So awesome. Okay. All right. What do you think? Wait, I got one more thing I really want to talk about. All right. Uh, I want to hear it. Because because this, this is a huge thing that holds people back. And I want to brainstorm for people for just a couple minutes on what they can do to address this. All right. What's holding you back? How many people would say to you, Mike, money, finances? Uh, well, there's that, right? So we have the people who want proof of concept. And so they're not really, you know, really it's just a, kind of like they're not 100% committed. So they're, sh they're not sure. But then money is an issue. But here's the, I, I, I always think this is important to talk about the fact that this business allows you to lift yourself up by your own bootstrap so what do i mean by that we buy land regularly from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars in that price range right this is a micro range you don't have to leverage other people's money you don't have to get investor money capital you can do this of your own accord you can buy land for two three four five hundred dollars double your money and make this happen over and over again. So I think it's worth repeating, Scott, right? A lot of people hear about land investing and might say, oh, geez, I can't buy a $50,000 property. I can't buy a $20,000 property. And here's what I'm telling you. You don't have to. I paid my $40,000 in debt off buying property for three, four $400. You can buy unlimited property for that price and flip it for double your money over and over again. So money is not an issue. It's truly a commitment. It truly is a commitment. And, and as you said, you, you can buy land for so cheap, right? That uh, you, you can turn this into a profit real quick. Um, but, but we, you know, you and I talk to people all the time that where money is the issue in moving forward, whether it's being, you know, whether it's about getting the investor toolkit or going into flight school. Um, but there are ways, there are ways to get that initial money for investing. Uh, whether it is scrimping and saving every cent, whether it's going out to eat a less, you know, few times less a, a week, uh, whether it's, you know, you've been living in the same house for 20 years and you have a lot of equity in your home and, Maybe that equity isn't doing much for you. Uh, or you've been in a job for 20 years and you have a large retirement account and that retirement account is earning 5% per year. So why not take $10,000 out of that? Will there be fees? Yes. But the returns that we make in this business will surmount those fees significantly. Uh, here's another thing, Mike. Like, partner up with somebody. You know? Do this with a, a family member, a trusted colleague, uh, a, a best friend, a lot of couples, uh, your, your lot spouse. Of, yeah, there's a lot of uh, yeah, there's a lot of couples in the business, uh, brothers, um, aunt, you know, uh, uncles and nephews, aunts and nieces. I mean, there's so many ways you can partner up. Absolutely. Awesome, Mike, Scott. Is there anything else uh, we need to address with uh, what's holding you back? No, let's bring in Matt for an outro. What do you think? I think that's great. I think it's time. Oh, hopefully, he's still Matt, here. I'm, Matt, I want to hear about your. Uh, I want to hear your take on the uh, on the wow, Steve that, Harvey Steve Harvey video. Was that the hat you had on earlier? Or is that a new hat? No, this is uh, this is my hat. Is this uh, same hat. Same hat. It's like. On off my head. It doesn't really fit me. I just had it in my basement, so I put it on. 
Matt, what are your thoughts on the? Can you can you please? I saw your comment. Mm. Uh, tell us tell us about the Steve Harvey video. Oh yeah, that was really good. Uh, I think people should watch that. Forget land investing. You should just watch that video, whether you're religious yeah. or not. It's irrelevant. Um, I mean, they tape. So he, they, he tapes like uh, you know whatever ten ten of those shows in a day or some crazy amount. Um, so it's everybody, everybody in the audience are actual contestants later in the day, right? That's how that show functionally works. So he does that speech, right? You're the one, I think you were the one turned me out of this Bosman. Um, but it's, it's kind of coming back to me now. Yeah. Uh, that was a long time ago. Um, it's really, really good. You should just go Google Steve Harvey, um, family, uh, family. Steve Harvey leap of faith. Leap of faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's you just, just shut your pie hole and go watch it because it really is. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe. It's just him being him in front of everybody in that group off the cuff. There's like stage hands walking around. This thing isn't staged. It's him speaking from his heart about becoming more than what you are and finding that inner person uh, and getting after it and following your dreams. It's really good. That's really deep. Awesome. That's the end of that. Oh my God. That was awesome. Wow. That was, that is the deepest you have ever been. I don't go deep. I'm not a deep ever. guy. Very superficial. I mean, get excited. I never thought a guy who was six, eight as big Woo! as you, who, who wears those big pink pants at uh, boot camp, could, could be that deep. Yeah. So I, I get a lot of <laughs> flat for those pants because they're, 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 uh, they're not, they're not pink, but okay. I love but, them. Um, I love them. I bought those for four dollars from LL Bean. I have multiple pairs. Turns out, people in my size don't wear pink pants. Who, who, who are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Zeno. Right, four bucks. Come on. Do I look like a? a no a, way they could put that much material together for four dollars. No, no, they were like they were like thirty five percent off on top of being ninety percent off. They were like, know, I, these are so ugly, take them out of our store. Did you go oh, to the old gun store in Maine? Uh, no, I was at the uh, the one up in Nashua, the outlet, right off of uh, 3. Oh, okay. We love those outlets. Yeah, I, have to compliment sure. you know, I have to compliment you, though, Matt, because more than one person said to me that weekend, only he could pull those pants off. Yeah, baby. You, should, you know what? If you're good, and I'm not saying you're this good, but if you're good, I'll bring my drinking pants to uh, to the next boot camp. Those nice. are solid. I got a pair of those. Oh yeah, solid madras pants. Um, Matt, let, let me know next time you go to the outlets. My wife, though, if your wife's going, you go. We'll we'll walk around. They can shop. That's a great little hangout. Oh, I love it up there. I used to work at Fidelity in Nashua, so I used to drive by there all the time. Is this rent them? No, no, it's not rent them. It's uh, oh, no, Merrimack. Merrimack. Yeah, Merrimack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right up uh, just the over New the England thing, Scott. <laughs> You guys have outlets out there, Midwest? Yes, we have outlets. You have outlets. We have outlets. God, anything before over, the outro? Over in the Wisconsin Dells, we have outlets. Anything before the outro? Well, we got a toast. I, I have a toast. You know, I think we've ended a couple episodes without toast, so we should do oh. a, like, a really good one. Go ahead. I don't know if it's really a toast, but it's a quote, and I think it's very applicable to what we've been talking about tonight. Then apply it. So this is uh, this is a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, this is getting deep. He, yes, exactly. Let us move forward with strong and active faith. Take that leap. I love it. Mm, yeah. Strong and Cheers. active faith. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Ready for the outro? Here we go, Eminem. I'm putting my light on. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Oh, look at the boxing. Oh, mom and dad are boxing tonight. Oh, my God. Merrimack Outlet. Hold it. Oh, God. Fuck you.